Welcome back to Cryptolytics, giving a fresh take on crypto analytics. And today I'm going to cover one of the features in Drift that I really, really like. It is called the scale order. And I'm going to show you how you can use it to trade ranges, especially when we're in the sideways choppy periods on some of your favorite altcoins. And if you've heard about the grid bots on all of the various crypto YouTube channels out there, then this is essentially the same thing, but fully decentralized and on Solana. So let's just jump straight into it, shall we? So here we are on Drift. We're going to open up a, I would say the equivalent of a grid bot. We're going to do it within Drift. So Drift doesn't have that sort of one click or the couple click thing that Pinex has with the grid bots. And I've spoken about Pinex on this channel and I have done so since I would say 2023 is when I started using Pinex. So I think a lot of these other guys are pretty late to the game, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of my Pinex bots aren't grid bots. They are actually using trading view trade signals. So buy, sell, all that sort of thing. Whereas the grid bots actually are not really bots. So what I was doing content on is an actual bot. These are not actual bots. These are more so just a set of limit orders above and below price. So you can set how many grids and say, for example, you set, let's just say you set 50 grids. It's going to set 25 above price that you set within the range and then 25 below price. So there's a very simple way to set that up in Drift and actually Drift has a slight edge here because Drift has scale orders with ascending and descending. So what ascending is, you can see here, we've got the order types here, and this one is scale. So that's what I'll be talking about today. To get to that, you just go to this tab here at the end of this list, and it will say others or other. And then you just come down here. This is where you put your stop loss orders in, you take profits, all that sort of thing. But in this case, we're gonna select scale. We're on bonk at the moment, so I'm going to set up a bonk. We'll say grid bot, but it's not really a grid bot. It's just a scale order or grids, you could say, or ladder orders. That's the other thing as well as ladder out. I'm sure maybe you've heard that terminology before or scale out. Same concept as the grid bots, where essentially what it's doing is it's creating pressing limit orders above and below price, and then it executes those accordingly. So as soon as the grid limit order is tapped, then it fills. And the other thing as well that's important for when we're setting this up in Drift is that when we're taking profit, we're setting it to reduce only. So that way it's not opening up a short trade if price starts to go up. So that's one thing I will cover here. So we've got these different order types here. You can see by default it is flat, which means that everything is linear and the same. So every limit order that is set within the range that you set is exactly the same. So if you say, for example, set five limit orders or five scale orders within a certain range that say you've put $500 in and you're setting it over five, each one will be $100. So it makes sense. Now ascending is more interesting. You can see here, we've got an explanation here. So all orders will have the same size for flat, right? And then my favorite one is the ascending. So, so ascending orders sizes will linearly increase, right? So it means that at the start, if you're buying the closer to price, then the order is much smaller than when it moves further away from price. Same as when you're selling, the first take profits are smaller than the ones higher up. So you're increasing your profit essentially because what you're doing there is you're averaging down lower. So as price say for example comes down, they're small and then bigger and then bigger again and then even bigger. So what will happen then is your average will end up being around here, right? Because this is much smaller and this is nowhere near as, as big as what's below it, right? With let's just say the line size here is the size of the order, right? So it means that if it does tag that last one, then it really brings your average down more than, for example, if it was linear, then I would say it's probably more likely to be in the middle there 
But I guess with this, you'd probably maybe even sit, I would say, potentially here in terms of your average buy price, right? So descending is the other way around, right? Descending is you're more aggressively buying closer to price. So let's just say again, the size of the line there is the order size, and then it gets smaller the further down you go, I guess in this case, it would be like this because it's coming along the line there. But anyway, so as you're going down, so it means your average buy price probably will be more so around here. So it's still buying a little bit, but it's bringing your average down nowhere near as much. So in a bull market, ascending generally, I would say, is the better option. And in a bear market, that's probably when you're descending, might be a little better. But I think in a bear market, to be honest, just do spot and ascending. Because that means that if market keeps going down further, then your average is bought down even more. So that's why I just think ascending is, I think it's the best. And it's something that those bots don't have, right? The grid bots just don't have. So at the moment anyway, they may change this in the future, but let's just say this is the edge that Drift has. You might be wondering, well, how do I set this? How do we pick my range? Or well, you could go simply based on a uh, price range. This, I guess you could say the, the most basic range for here for Bonk. I would say between here and here. You could just identify that visually just by looking at the chart that we had a deviation above here. And we've come back into the range. And again, we've probably, I would say our range is, I would say around here. That's probably about right. Because we've been bouncing around here now on Bonk at least for the last more than a year, almost two years, right? Bonk has just been bouncing around in this range. So we're in the middle of the range right now, you could say. So if we just get our fib retracement tool, we could see that we've been bouncing around. We've lost the 50% level, which is the green line. And we're coming on into the lower quadrant. If you really wanted to, you could start your range there and come down to buys down the bottom and then have your sales here and then bring them back up to the top. If you just want to trade this range, I think maybe that's what we'll do. But the problem is then it'll start to execute the orders immediately, which is fine. So I would say anywhere between here and where the price is currently, whatever orders it put there, if it was to put a bunch of orders there, it'll execute those immediately, right? Because they're below the set price, which is fine because it, it basically will mean your start price technically is here and then it'll have the rest of the limit orders down below. So I think let's just trade this range. We could probably just do it that way. That's kind of... I would say maybe the best way to go is to have your 50% as the range, or you could just go more simply and maybe just come here and say, well, this is my 50% level, right? This makes sense to align things with where the price is right now. So if you want to do the 50%, if you think maybe Bonk might come down even further, maybe it will. If uh, September's super bearish, we could come down to the, either this low or just come back to the range lows. So, but if you're going to use ascending orders, I think that I would prefer just to come to the bottom of the range. So let's just do that. And then we'll start from this line here, the 0382. And this is the benefit of, as well about setting this up manually is that you have the opportunity to modify things a little bit. It's an equal amount of grids on either side, but it's profit take more stretched out. So let's just say, for example, we'll just want 500 US dollars. Make sure that this is not reduce only. We're going to do that for the top. We're gonna go to start price as current price. So the easiest way to do that is to just grab the price there. So start price is there. And then end price we're gonna say is the bottom of the range, which is $11, right? We're just gonna do 10 for this because I don't wanna spam the order book with orders, I suppose. And we'll just go here and then click. I just like 10 anyway, personally. And we'll click buy. One of these will immediately execute because it's at where price is. So now I've got a long in on Bonk. So you can see the little B stands for means buy. So every time you buy, you can see the B. Every time you sell, you can see the S. And you can see I've got the grids below. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is now the profit orders. So again, we're gonna go ascending, keep it the same. So that way we can sort of maximize our profits. I'm gonna change the sell and then go click reduce only. And then we're going to do the full amount. You can go in Bonk as well, make sure that it's the same, but I'd say it's the same. And then we're going to set them at current price, which again is go a little bit above current price, I would say, and pop that in there. 
and then we'll go to the top of the range, which is here. So we're gonna go reduce only, and that way it doesn't start to open a short if we go up and it hasn't filled all these yet. So it will need to fill all of these to be able to match the exact same side on the other side. So if price doesn't really come down, for example, if price comes down just a little bit and then starts going up and then comes back up to the top of the range, it'll only sell what you've got or what you were able to buy within this period with reduce only. So that's why this reduce only is important to click because it means that it won't start opening up a short position when it's sold all of what you have in your long position. So we're gonna go and now execute that. So that's 22.76. So we've got a little bit of breathing room if we do go up a little bit. And then we're just gonna set that now. And because I turn on auto confirm, that has already gone in there. So again, this is 332%. If you move this slider, then you get stuck. But just leave it up at max. And then, so now we've got our grid orders. Essentially, what this is gonna do is it's gonna start buying on the way down. And then even if we only come down to here, your average will probably end up being probably, I would say, if this is 50% of this would say, maybe around here or something like that. And then as it starts to come back up, if we do get a bounce, it will start taking profit and it will only sell what you've got in your long position. It won't start opening up a short once it's exhausted all of the capital you have in your long position. So I think that's really cool. And yeah, so now we've got our grid bot. We can delete that so we can see everything on the chart. That's our grid bot. So essentially we've done the same thing that you can do on Pionix. We've just set it up manually, but that's okay. It's not a big deal, right? Because it only took a few extra seconds to set up manually and we're doing it completely decentralized and in DeFi. And also if you do start making profit on that trade, then you're also making additional yield on the USDC as well, which you'll have to come in and manually settle in order to get your USDC banked into your wallet. But whatever you have been able to bank as profit in this strategy, you could call it, will start to earn yield as well. And it's currently 8.59. I've seen this as high as 12, 13% as well. Just depends on how many people are borrowing USDC at the time, right? And that's how the rates work for DeFi, that the demand and supply imbalance is what dictates yield. So as this gets higher and higher, people will probably start parking their stable coins in there. Places like Lulo, for example, will start to deploy capital into Drift, and then that will rebalance the pool and that yield will come down. But more people, if they're really underwater on their long positions, then this will get higher as, as more USDC is borrowed from their collateral. So a lot of the time they'll be collateralizing their Solana, liquid staked or other assets, and they will be borrowing stable coins, USDC in this case, in order to trade against USDC because everything's traded against USDC, right? So that's the reason why this goes up because as people are more underwater, they have to borrow more USDC against their asset, which is depreciating in value. And then that's when this shoots up. And then people often will then deposit their USDC into Drift that will rebalance the pool as the supply and demand dynamic rebalances. So that's the reason why this changes. But now we've got our grid bot in. Again, it's not really a bot, but we're gonna go with it. And we've changed our range to here. So now if the market does turn bearish over the next month, we're gonna come down maybe to the range lows all the way down here. And then as the market hopefully starts to recover into October and into the end of the year, then we start to actually take profit on that and that's just how these grid order systems work. This one is not super high resolution. This is a 20 grid, you could say, because you've got 10 buys and 10 sells above. So this is a 20 grid order. But you can see here, if you look at the orders, you can see we've got a match 4.4. Again, it's getting higher the higher it goes, right? And it's getting higher the lower it goes on the buy side. So you get your 4.4 match with your 4.4, 3.5 to 3.5 so on and so forth. So I hope is that it comes down all the way to the bottom, maybe it deviates below a bit, shape comes back in and then starts to hopefully do what it does. And then hopefully we get back to all time highs. If we do get a, an alt season, I would say that Bonk would likely benefit from that. 
So that's how you set up grid trading or a grid bot akin to say Pinex within Drift. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, then please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video and if it was helpful to you. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. This is Cryptolytics signing out. Have a good one.